CC block load is under the stylized category and it allows you to transition something on in kind of an old dial up internet loading kind of way. When you apply it, the layer disappears, but we have this completion slider right here, which if I increase the number, will just bring my layer back on. So let me zoom in nice and close here so we can see what's happening. With just a little bit of this turned up, you can see that we get this very pixelated version of my logo and it is wiping it on from the top to the bottom. And as I increase it, it does another pass and cleans it up a little bit more until I get to 100% and it's back to right where it was before I applied the effect. So if we look at the next value, scans, it's set to four by default. It's going to do four passes basically to get to the full resolution image. So one, two, three, and four. The last two are really subtle. But let's add some keyframes on this completion so we can actually see it in motion. So I'm gonna set a keyframe on the first frame of my animation and go forward maybe three seconds and set the completion to 100 and then just play that back. Let me set my work area here and play back. So you can see that the first pass is very quick compared to the second and third. So you might wanna adjust the easing of these two keyframes if you wanna see these passes happen more consistently. So if I were to just have that selected, go into my graph editor, and right now I'm looking at the speed graph, which you can change under this menu right here to value graph if you'd rather use that. But I'm just going to ease out from zero velocity, give it a nice influence curve so that it basically takes longer to get out of 0% and not much time to get into 100% once it gets to this point in time. If I play this back, you see that first pass is much slower and the second, third, and fourth passes are all much more consistent now. Now we can change the number of scans on that second property. If I increase this up to say six, then it's going to do six passes and you're gonna see more lower quality versions of your layer before it gets to the cleared up version. Or if you wanted to go super fast, we could put it down to say two and then you're not gonna see much degradation in the image quality. I liked that six scan, so I'm gonna set that back to where it was. And then we have the start cleared checkbox. So like I said, when you apply the effect, your layer disappears, but if you turn that checkbox off, and let me switch this to full resolution. The layer is always there, and then it will continue to go on and clean up the image. I'll check that back on, and the final option is bilinear. I'm gonna pause it right here and click on that bilinear, and this is just a different method for how it handles anti-aliasing. I don't like the way that this looks, but it might be useful for you in some use cases. But that's all there is to the effect. So what's an example of how you might use this? Well, let's just take a look at this example that I've set up got this picture of an old computer and I've mapped my logo and a grid onto the screen, which let me just walk you through really quickly how I set this up. I'm gonna turn off all of the effects so you can see that it's just my logo and I have the layer set to screen. But I started by adding a grid, which got rid of my logo, but I customized it to be this green grid. I added a solid composite to give it a background color and the opacity is set to 12%. So it's a very subtle background color. Then I added a CC composite to bring my logo back in front, making sure to uncheck RGB only. And I also turned the opacity of that down to 90%. And these are all just creative choices, by the way. Don't feel like you have to follow these settings exactly. Then I tinted the entire thing to this green color and turned the amount to tint down to 56 so that it wasn't pure green. I had a little bit of my logo colors coming back in. Then I added a Venetian blinds effect to kind of generate these scan lines. And then I added a glow. And then I'll skip over the CC block load for a minute. I added an optics compensation, which just gives me a little bit of that screen distortion. And then a CC power pin to place the four corners of that layer into the four corners of the computer. So with that order, I'll just collapse all these up. It allows me to apply all of these effects and get it looking the way that I want before I apply that distortion and that power pin to get it sized to the screen. All right, then I added the CC block load and I added those same two keyframes on the completion value, went to that graph editor and again, adjusted that curve. Could probably make that even a little bit more extreme. And let's just stick those scans back up to six. I like the way that looked a little better. And if I play this back, I have a nice old computer screen look transition in for my graphics. And because this is a pre-comp, I could go inside it and do whatever I want in here. I could animate it add other elements, and it's all gonna be reflected in this main comp. But that is CC Block Load in a nutshell.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.